Introducing Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY on the OTCQB, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit Recyclico.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium-ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. <laughs> Today he's speaking to us from the convention floor in Las Vegas, where you're at the Cannabis Convention. What's happening there, Mark? And maybe just give us, uh, first off, do you have a special offer for our listeners and your little disclaimer? Yeah, sure. Thank you, uh, Jim. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I provide financial advice, but I do publish VR trader.com and uh, there is a um, discount for listeners a uh, promo code if you go to vrtrader.com it's 2022 half off and you get 50 percent off of any of our newsletters including the uh, vr cannabis sector report the cannabis letter and that's why i'm currently attending what's called the mj biz con convention which is the biggest convention in the industry for the cannabis uh, sector which includes both u.s and canadian uh companies so uh, at the cannabis convention what are you doing and what do you expect to do well you know the industry uh has been in, a, in the cellar we've been in a bear market for uh, a couple years and uh you know i like stocks that are way down and cheap and you know there's a lot of talk about you know legislation changing and so forth and you know in, i guess if the economy gets uh, bad enough uh, or stock market goes low enough they say the sin stocks tend to do better, you know, alcohol, uh, tobacco, maybe cannabis, you know, people look for uh, distractions, I suppose. So it's been an ongoing theory about sin stocks doing better in recessionary environments, and we are certainly have entered that and probably will get worse in the next year or so. But regardless, uh, the stocks are cheap, and uh, there was some buying interest starting to show in my technical charts, and there are some companies in particular that I wanted to visit you know, that are here, uh, that have really attractive charts. You know, some stocks are down from fifty, sixty dollars a share to three or four or five bucks. And that, you know, that attracts my attention. Not that that's going to go back to fifty or sixty dollars, but you certainly get a technical rally. And, you know, even in a bear market, uh, there's always stocks, uh, and opportunities that you could find. Perhaps cannabis will be one of them. You know, we, we know energy, you know, could still be on the list, uh, natural gas and, oil and so forth and you know so there's always stuff you know you want to look for so anyway i uh I, it was something i wanted to attend and you know they haven't been having conventions for a couple of years because of the covid situation so this is really an opportunity and i have to tell you it's huge it's two floors i mean you know literally a couple hundred or maybe several hundred companies so it's a daunting task to visit them but you know a lot of equipment providers you know things that process uh, marijuana and cannabis and uh you know extraction devices and of course you know you know that's the service part of the industry and you have you know you know companies that provide growing supplies for example to the industry all kinds of hydroponics and so forth so you know it's, it's just interesting stuff and uh you know it's pretty well attended so anyway uh, long and short uh i'm interested in cannabis it's one of our letters and we have one particular stock that we recommended, which is up, you know, about 30, 40 percent. It's in our list that is a, is a, one of the attendees here at the convention. So, um, you know, subscribers will see that when they go to our, our newsletter. Are they handing out free samples because it's legal in Nevada? No, you're not supposed to uh, smoke uh, or drink or do anything in the convention center. Though I have to tell you, when I walked in the door, the air was uh, full of the odor of uh, marijuana. So I'm getting a little high here uh, just because I, I went I went in the door. Maybe they're smoking outside and uh, it came in. But, you know, a lot of marijuana is spent other ways. You know, there's drops and pills and, you know, capsules and other ways you would, you, you would get it. You know, it's not just smoking. In fact, 
I'm very much against the smoking. I think, you know, that's a, what got me really interested um, in the sector was the medicinal aspect of the whole thing. You know, the lot of cures that people were uh, achieving as a result of, uh, you know, taking marijuana, the THC, as well as the CBD. And, uh, you know, now there's a big sector, a subsector, I guess you could call it, in the cannabis space. It's called psychedelics. And a lot of new public companies have arisen that provide uh, the psychedelic drugs, many from the 1960s, you know, like the LSD-type drugs and so forth. But the medicine, the medicine aspects of it, the doctors seem to be behind it. And I know some people that are experiencing some, uh, you know, psychological disorders, and uh, some doctors are starting to recommend some of these psychedelic drugs, which are obviously not related to cannabis or, you know, CBD. So it's a, sort of a branch of the same... Um, industry so it's sort of interesting uh you, you could go to the internet and check out psychedelics and see what you know medical benefits are of course you have to have a doctor involved and so forth so that's a new branch and a couple of new stocks have uh emerged in uh in that space so it's, you know, it's just fascinating to see what's going on and uh well i'm being a little long-winded here but you know you know, you only learn by observing yeah, plus if they have stuff under display cases, uh, some of that essence gets out. Because I remember covering a huge drug bust by the cops, and they like to lay all the packages of whatever out in, in, in plastic bags and number it. And afterwards, I felt so dizzy, and I and I asked, like, what's going on? I said, well, some of that gets through the plastic. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, I think at the early conventions, they were trying to you know, distribute samples and so forth. You probably get CBD because that's, uh, it doesn't have any of the THC levels in it. So I think they probably, I, I did notice a couple, not, not a couple, several CBD booths here. So they probably do have samples or they sell it, but the pure, you know, THC strong stuff, uh, I'm pretty sure based on my previous attendance at similar conventions, they don't allow it inside. Now, I know uh, a lot of the focus has been on the possible federal legalization or decriminalization uh, of marijuana with the Republicans taking over the House. Is that going to happen? You know, there's a lot of Republican, uh, maybe a lot is an uh, exaggeration, but there is resistance to it. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how fast it's going to get through. They've been talking about this for years, and most of it, honestly, the, the biggest issue is the banking aspects of it. You know, it, it was a as you remember, in the last uh, 10 years, as this industry unfolded, it was a cash business, particularly at the dispensaries, and uh, you couldn't put the money in the bank, and uh, the federal uh, the federal government, the IRS, would, would not allow you to deduct anything on your expenses uh, because, it, quote, unquote, it was an illegal industry, and people that were running businesses, you know, had they had to maintain sort of a cash posture there are actually stories about people up in colorado years ago taking their cash and buying real estate uh with the cash because they couldn't do anything else with it you put it in the bank uh you know the feds are following you the tax situation is abhorrent so there's a banking act that has been you know pending for a while here and i'm surprised that hasn't gone through because uh i guess the the, the, the crux of the matter is it's still quote unquote an Ill illegal operation even though the states have approved it so you know all the most of the states maybe two, i think about 25 states in the u.s have approved it of course i don't think you have that issue as much in canada at all but here in the u.s it has been a case so the banking act i think is the main thing that needs to be passed but they want to reschedule marijuana they want to take it off that top drug list you know which is really silly why it's there to begin with you know, it's been around like gold for five thousand years you know it's not something you know, the uh, drug companies came up with recently, and I suppose the drug companies have something to do with this, you know what I mean? They don't like competition. So, you know, keeping it on that uh, pr that uh, that top list of, of negative drugs, you know, I suppose supports, uh, you know, drug companies that, uh, you know, find, find competition in something that, frankly, could be helpful, and it has been helpful to a lot of people. I know a couple people uh, that I met at previous conventions that suffered from cancer, and they said the marijuana really helped reduce the pain, and uh, you know they were taking a chemotherapy and helped them and so forth. So I had some anecdotal, you know, co you know, interest in when I hear people telling me it helps them. So you know, uh, to each his own, but uh, you know, it takes time for uh, change. You know, as new ideas come out, they're rejected, and ultimately they're 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 absorbed into the uh, culture. But you know the. Marijuana itself, I don't have to be, you know, repetitive. I mean, it's been around thousands of years. It's not something new. So obviously it has some benefits. 
We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, is the uh, equipment side of the pot business big, uh, supplying hydroponics, grow lights, things like that? Is that something that people don't think about, the support side of it? It's huge. In fact, when I walked in the door here, you know, we got two floors, uh, hundreds of exhibits. I see mostly equipment, you know, very sophisticated equipment. You look at the stuff. I'll probably post a couple pictures on my cannabis website over the weekend of some of the booths and, you know, these stainless steel, huge devices that are used to process, I suppose, the cannabis or create the oils and so forth. Um, there is, you know, a couple companies up there uh, here that I've visited already that do produce, as you say, the hydroponics and the growing equipment. The funny thing is I've been in a couple of those stores, and I actually like them just for growing tomatoes and normal uh, plants. I have a couple in my, in my house, in fact, they uh, like these grow stations that have lights on them. You can grow all kinds of vegetables using hydroponics. Of course, you could choose to grow marijuana, but I, I have a couple at home that I use just to grow, you know, uh, you know, uh, celery and beets and uh, tomato and a few cool things using the hydroponic technology. But uh, if you walk into those stores that have that equipment, you, obviously you can use it for a lot of purposes. And, and I'm very pro people having their own gardens and growing their own stuff. If nothing else, it's a hobby, but it could be a survival thing at some point if you have to grow your own stuff. Remember uh, during World War II, they had those victory gardens and so forth that people had. So, you know, uh, we do have a, a, a event in Europe which is unfolding, and who knows, Hopefully it doesn't uh, accelerate, but it might be a good idea to grow some of your own stuff. So some of these hydroponics and other equipment that is displayed here, and uh, it could be used for multi-purposes. Uh, moving on to energy, what do you think is going to happen with oil and natural gas going into the winter? Well, we're long natural gas here in our service. I think it's, uh, it had, had ran up big, had a correction. It's coming off a little bottom. I think it's only common sense that... Uh, you're going to see things happening. You know, there were a couple supposedly accidental missiles fired at Poland uh, uh, yesterday, and whether they were accidental or not, I think, you know, we've already entered, quote, unquote, World War Three. I mean, it's already on the table. No one's really talking about it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty cynical about this thing. I think the U.S. Democrats, and the uh, and Europe, particularly uh, the World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab and that whole group. I mean, they're sort of pushing for war. They want to get rid of Putin, however they can. Uh, he's a you know he's he's an enemy. He's an enemy in more ways than one. Not only conquering Ukraine, but you know he's anti a lot of the things that the West is for, like the woke movement and uh, you know uh, you know sex change operations and a lot of things that i'm against for against as well and you know uh putin sort of stands in their way in a, in a way so i think you know the west has decided they want to get rid of this guy what they don't understand it could get worse if he's uh if he is taken out so getting back to your question i mean natural gas should do better energy should do better and defense stocks should do better and i you know i don't think the cream puff has hit the fan yet jim i think it's going to get worse before it gets better so uh got to be defensive both in the markets and uh, picking a selective uh, cent- sectors that might uh, benefit. You know, maybe cannabis, as I joked earlier, might do better as people need some distraction, including tobacco and alcohol. I know some of the alcohol stocks like uh, Constellation Brands that produces um, Corona beer has been doing better. So uh, Anheuser-Busch that the, does the beer. You know, a lot of uh, liquor stocks have been doing better recently. So there, there may be more common sense uh, involved here than uh, it beats the eye. Well, uh, during Prohibition, uh, the U.S. consumption of alcohol per capita was at its highest level. Just make it illegal because if you had to pay $5 to get into the speakeasy, that's uh, a third of your monthly salary just to get in to drink. So you're going to drink to to uh, excess, I guess, and get your investment back. Any other areas you're looking at right now? No, I, I would just, uh, you know, sort of w- winding up here. I, I think, you know, we're still very much in a, in a bear market, Jim. Uh, 
we do have these seasonal tendencies for a rally uh, into the end of the year. Uh, a lot depends on what the U.S. dollar is doing. The U.S. dollar continues. It's been in a correction for a while, so people are getting encouraged that maybe a sign of inflation is going away. But just today I heard on uh, CNBC, uh, which is not my favorite uh, network, but one of the uh, uh, Fed governors or former Fed governors says, oh, gee, we got to take interest rates up to 7%. Well, I've been saying that for a long time. I say if you got inflation at 8%, uh, percent, uh, you've got a, your uh, your target for your federal funds rate has got to equal or exceed that number. So uh, that's, not, that's where we're headed unless inflation really comes down, and I don't really see it coming down. I, I think that downtick to 7.7%. That was reported is, is, is temporary. It might go a little bit lower, but a lot of these numbers, you know, the government plays with a lot of these numbers, and you really can't trust them. We know that consumer price index doesn't include food and energy, which is a fraud. So you know, you know, you just can't believe all the numbers, and particularly if there's going to be confrontation in Europe. So I think interest rates are going to go up, and I'm uh, I'm afraid, and I'm hopefully hopeful it doesn't repeat the 1980 phenomenon with Paul with Paul Volcker. And we have a super surge, and you see mortgages 11, 12, 15 percent again. And in that scenario, I don't know how equities could do well. So uh, uh, I would, you know, be in cash, be playing the short side, and maybe a couple of the select the, the sectors that we had been referring to here, because I think this is not just a short-term phenomenon that's going to end and just go away so fast. So uh, be cautious, and uh, you know, be aware that we're in a negative environment, and it's not going away right away. Mark, enjoy the convention. I'm, ha- I'm having a great time here. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He was speaking to us from the Cannabis Convention in Las Vegas. If you have any questions for Mark or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.